Hello, I'm Lou and welcome back to Open Up The Cloud. In the last video, I was talking about the four different types of tools that you should be looking into when you're learning the cloud. Now, the reason that I put out that video is to give you a sort of narrow set of things to look into so that you don't kind of get overwhelmed by the whole different set of tools that are out there in the ecosystem. Now, as I was doing some writing the other day, as something else also hit me, which is that companies also have sort of architectural philosophies, a set of patterns basically I've seen over my time, over my career, and usually with each different approach comes a different set of tools. So what that allows you to do is focus on just that subset of tools and you can kind of ignore the others. Now, one of the first questions you might be having is really, why do companies even do this? When you've got the all of these different tools that you could potentially look into, why aren't companies actually just using the best tool for the job? This is particularly common as well when it comes to languages. What companies tend to do is pick one or two different programming languages and focus on them. The reason that companies do this is basically to build up their own internal expertise. And it also makes things like hiring a lot easier because if you have a whole number of different technologies internally, hiring for those different positions becomes harder the more different technologies you add into your stack. So what are these three different categories of philosophy or architectural patterns that companies employ? First one, I would probably call something like instance-based or server-based. And what I mean by this is a company that is broadly operating on servers in the cloud as they would be doing sort of on-premise. Now, typically speaking, these are gonna be your companies that have maybe moved on-premise into the cloud and they're taking their existing knowledge and skills and transferring them into a cloud setup. Now, these companies, generally speaking, will be operating maybe also a monolithic architecture type where they're deploying one big server for their application applications rather than a lot of smaller ones. And that can make things sort of simpler in many aspects, but then also introduces problems in other areas. But generally speaking, it's a very similar philosophy as you might see in a, like a data center environment, but moved into the cloud. Now, when it comes to these types of companies, the types of tools that I see them using is also different types of configuration management tools. So when you've got like bigger and individual servers, what I'm seeing as well is companies will tend to try and keep those servers alive for a longer period of time. So they'll be using tools like uh, Ansible, like Chef and or Puppet, for instance, in order to run scripts on those servers while they're running. And what they're ultimately trying to do is keep those servers running. And this kind of goes against this idea of uh, immutable infrastructure. Now, generally speaking, immutable infrastructure is seen as a best practice, but then again, there are other companies that are not operating with this process for various reasons, or for pragmatic reasons. And at the end of the day, companies are trying to earn money. So if that is the right setup for them, then that makes sense. The second type of architectural pattern or paradigm that I see a lot is also container-based. So these are companies that are doubling down on the idea of containers. If you're not familiar with containers, they're basically, it's like a lightweight virtual machine. And the real advantage of containers is what we said before is actually they are then immutable. So rather than actually updating the live server, you update your sort of recipe or set of steps to create your container, and then you redeploy an entirely new container. Companies that are using containers as well will tend to be using some sort of container orchestration tool, whether that be Kubernetes, for instance, is a very popular one, which is open source. But then there's also a bunch of different managed options like EKS, ECS in AWS. You can forget about things like Ansible and Chef and Puppet, put those tools to one side, maybe have an appreciation for for them or to understand what they do, but mostly you can ignore them, which is a good point. And then the last pattern that I see a lot of companies using is serverless or serverless first, which is using functions or functions as a service or the different serverless services as a priority instead of using the different aspects like container-based or even instance-based. Now, it's the same with all of these patterns that the company will have a stance where they prefer a certain approach over another. So that doesn't mean that they will not use another approach if it makes sense for a given scenario. It's just that they will have a general bias towards one particular approach. Serverless tend to be maybe smaller companies, newer companies, that are startups and things like that that have had the opportunity to choose their technology approach in the last couple of years. Okay, so it's not necessarily always just as straightforward as that. There is a little bit of overlap between these different areas. For instance, you can even run containers on some of the functions as a service. So by picking one of those different categories and focusing on it more, it means that you can target those companies that are using that approach. And it also means that you can narrow down the, the cloud space that you can focus on one particular area. And then of course, another question that comes out of that is which one is best? In reality, there isn't really one that's best. The best thing to do is to pick the technology that matches the jobs that are available to you. If you have a background in some of these tools, then for sure, then it makes more sense to focus on one of these areas. Or if there's something that you particularly enjoy or you see an opportunity in that particular space, then that's a good reason to pick that different area of technology. Okay, so I hope that helped and I hope that started to get you thinking about where your sort of preferences in these different areas lie and which is the best approach for you. And then just have fun with it and apply to different companies and see how it goes. And if you need to change and make a different approach, then you can always do that.